hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm here at the Cool Tools Studio and today I'm going to demonstrate creating sketch designs in fine silver. Um, all right, for this coil project, these are the items that I used. I've got the clay hydrator to keep our clay workable, 3M a microfine sanding sponge, uh, the clay cutter, the agate burnisher, and here's our clay that we used, which was art clay silver, the, the fine silver. We used this nice round brush, um, two acrylic uh, pieces, one for rolling the, the coils, and then one for designing our piece, um, the finishing stick, and our glass container here with water that has a nice little place to rest our brush. Um, and then we also use the work surface. So I have a, about a five gram lump of clay here. I'm gonna pinch off just a little bit and wrap the rest. What I typically do is take a Ziploc bag and cut it flat. And that's how I wrap my excess clay and then in, in the clay hydrator it goes. So, not required, but the wrap that comes in here is a little, a little crinkly. All right, so what you want to do when you're making snakes, and this is such an easy project because the tool, you really don't need a lot of tools, um, is that you want to take the acrylic and the way I do it, and there's several different ways because I've taken classes from many um, really talented instructors. What I do is I leave my fingertips above the acrylic just a bit. So when I'm rolling the clay, my fingertips are touching the surface. Okay, that's it, my fingertips, just my fingertips. You know, this does take a little practice, but it really isn't, it, it isn't rocket science. So here's my coil, and you know, it's thicker on this end, so maybe I'll just go back, push a little bit harder on this end to try and make it even. Now some people say if you rest your acrylic when you roll, you can get it even. Whatever works, um, this is kind of just up to you. Now I'm taking a, a fairly uh, f wide uh, round br brush, round bristle brush, and I'm one swipe, okay? And that way I'm giving it just a little bit of moisture and letting it rest. In the meantime, I have a piece of paper, and this is the beauty of coils, because you can create any design you want. Now I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recreate this piece I made earlier. So I've drawn it here. And then I'm going to place another acrylic. And it, you don't even have to use acrylic. At home I use glass. So whatever works. And again, don't be afraid to touch the clay. It's okay. <laughs> a lot of people are nervous to handle the clay, but it really isn't a, a terrible thing. All right. So my piece is soaked up a little bit of moisture feels good. So what I'll do is I'm going to start here with my snake, roll it around, and then one more time here for the second heart. And my goal is to use this one piece unbroken. Don't have to, you can use multiple pieces. I'm going to try and do it with one. So here we go. I'm going to start at the bottom and I place this first part of the snake right there at the bottom and then I tap it a little bit to have it to have it stick. Now here, this is the tricky part. If you want, you can just push the ends with your brush like that. I will actually go in there and pinch it. I know my hand's in the way here, but I will actually go in here and pinch it. But you know, you can just work it like this with your, with your hand to make that little part in the heart. Now I'm at the bottom and I come around one more time. And again, pinch it down. I know my hands are in the way here. And I'm working upside down, so I'm gonna actually pinch this one so you can see what I mean by pinching. Okay. So I've pinched that little heart to get the heart shape. And then here, I'm gonna go back with my big fingers. <laughs> get a little bit of, of water on there too, so I don't stick, and then pinch that top. All right, so it looks a little rough, but now that it's in place, we can take our brush and gently 
kind of form where you want it to go. This isn't, you know, an exact thing. And I kind of like it when I have, like here, I'm gonna maybe bake a little arch here in this heart, kind of make it a little unique. And then there we have, there we have our double heart made out of our coil. Okay, now we'll let this dry and then we can go back and do a little bit of refining and sanding and then I'll show you how to do the bale. So while our double heart is drying, I'm going to show you another way to make a heart. This one's also very simple with coils. And again, start with a ball. And just very gently, you, know, you have to kind of start with just a little bit of pressure. Because remember now, you're stretching out all of these particulates that are, you know, kind of in with this organic clay. And you have to kind of work it gently. So just light pressure. And again, it doesn't have to always be the same exact thickness, but close. Now this clay is pretty fresh, so I'm not gonna have to actually add moisture, but if you need to ever add moisture, go ahead and use a brush, add your moisture, and sometimes at home, I will actually put saran wrap over, let it sit, and then move on. So this piece is actually pretty good. So what I have here is I have one of my little, um, my little finishing sticks, and I'm putting a, <laughs> believe it or not, this came off of this brush. So it's really about the size of a, of a soda straw. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this, wrap it around twice, and I'm gonna take the bottom, and I'm gonna pinch it. So before I put this aside to dry, I'm gonna actually take my clay cutter and just cut off that end where I pinched it. And we can refine that but this is what it'll look like, and this will also go into the dehydrator to dry. Okay, so I've pulled our pieces out of the dehydrator and they are dry, but before we completely finish, we wanna make a bale for this guy. So, I'm gonna take, again, move these up here. Just a tiny pinch this time of clay, same technique. Just gonna roll a little piece. And we'll take, you know what, I'm gonna make that just a little bit thinner. A little bit thinner for our bale. There we go. I'm gonna take a, a damp brush. I don't want it to be too sloppy wet. And now I'm gonna form this coil and they're so fun to work with. I mean, it, it, it looks a little, a little daunting, but really they're just a, a, a pleasure to work with because there's so many different things you can do and it's so simple. And I'm gonna take my cutter and there, there we go. Remove this extra material here. Set it off to the side, it's a little sticky. And there I have my bale. So at this point, this kind of clay is, is, is pretty, uh, plays pretty well with itself. So I've got a little wet piece here and I'm attaching it to a dry piece. So I'm gonna moisten this to kind of reactivate the clay here. And this piece is already wet, so I'm just gonna butt it up against. Little smudge, push it just a little so all the surfaces touch. Oops, and don't bump it. Sometimes I work with stuff a little too much and you kind of have to just let it. So I think I'm just gonna let this dry as is. While that's drying, I'm gonna take my, my dry piece here and I'm gonna do a little sanding. I'm gonna use the the Microfine 3M sander. And really there isn't much to this. And that's another thing about, about using coils and, and, and I call them snakes. But it, you look how beautiful the, the surface already is. And so right down here I pinched it a bit and it's a little bit rough. So I'm gonna use my sander here. And just, and remember hold the piece gently because it is, going, it is a bit breakable in this stage, but it really is receptive to, to being sanded. 
And I'm just going to sand this in so it's not quite so rough looking. I always tell people to resist the urge to use water. You know, you, it's best if a piece is dry to try and keep it dry. I know a lot of times people will want to use a little bit of water to smooth things, and you can. Um, but at this stage of the game, it, there isn't really much this needs. Okay, so before we fire these pieces, and we will fire the two of them together, I'm going to do a little more refining on this guy. And since we made this one <clears throat> with a little bit of moisture to it, you can see that the back has, you know, some scraps, some stragglers. So I'm going to take my, my 3M sponge, I'm going to set it gently on there, and just very gently I'm going to go in little circles. And even like a figure eight too, you can. But this piece is small, so I'm just going to go in little circles here. And if you look now, that's really starting to bring down some of that that mess in there. All right. So now I'm going to pick it up. And again, just like with this one, the bottom is a little a little rough. Let's see how it's really smooths up nice because you make these coils so nice and, and perfect. There isn't a whole lot of cleanup. All right, a little bit on the top here. I think I got some fingerprints in here. We want to get rid of my fingerprints. Love these little sanding sponges. What's nice about these sanding sponges is that you don't press too hard. The, the spongy part kind of prevents you from really, really pressing down. And that's a good thing because you don't, again, this is very, um, very brittle at this stage. So, so here we have our two hearts ready to fire. So just to give you an idea, here is the, the torch firing setup. Um, of course, anytime you're using flame, be very careful. Uh, if you have a, some kind of smock or something you can wear, that would be advisable. Work in a well-ventilated area. Um, here we have the fume extractor, which will draw the fumes out and away from you. We have our kneeling pan, and we have our fiber board. And this is where we'll put our stuff. Here is our micro torch. And with all this set up, we're ready to fire. So we have our two hearts. They're refined um, and dry. And I have all of the things that I need to safely fire these with my torch. So. Now when you torch fire, you want to very slowly go around, and, and we're doing both pieces at once. And as you notice here, it's starting to smoke and it will flame up. And what you're seeing there is the binder is burning away. I'm going to keep the flame on it until that little bit of binder burns off. And then ultimately what you want to have happen is you want to get it to a salmon color. When I fire at home, I actually fire in almost a dark room. Once you get to the salmon color, you will keep it under this flame for two minutes. Do not start the timer until you see the salmon color. All right, so we're done firing. The pieces are cooling. If you want, absolutely, you can take a tweezers, quench them in clean water. <clears throat> but here they are, and I, I just wanted to explain a little bit here. Now, this is the piece I had made pr prior to this, and these are the ones we just fired. And you'll notice that they're white, and they don't even appear to be metal at this point, but what's happened is, uh, uh, molecularly, um, they're, if you could see this up close, it's almost like they're, the molecules are like standing up. So at this point, we have to burnish these pieces in order to get to bring out this shine. So we have a couple ways that we can do that. We can use our agate burnisher um, to polish, you know, right across the top and bring out that shine. Or we can take these pieces and throw them right into the tumbler. And at this point, I think we're just going to throw them right into the tumbler. So here are our pieces. Um, out of the tumbler. We tumbled them for, oh, I don't know, half an hour. Uh, really anything over an hour is just overkill. So throw them in the tumbler for a period of time. They came out beautifully. Nice high shine. I put this little uh, stick in here just to show how it would hang on a chain. 
This one, of course, you'd put a little jump ring on, but they are done. Now, the cool thing, again, about using, these are the pieces I made prior to coming here, about using coiling is the possibilities are endless. And if you take a piece of paper and kind of draw what you want to do, you can use your coils to go over that and, you know, just have a lot of fun with it. These are super quick and easy to make. Anything you can draw, you can create in silver. Thanks for watching.